Okay, the real key or the real beauty of DNA is just the mere concept that it holds a code or it holds information that can ultimately be used to the production of a protein or the functional parts of our bodies or of our cells. And that whole concept of the DNA being used as a code to the ultimate production of protein is called the central dogma of biology. So in this real schematic form it looks like this. DNA is transcribed into RNA or a ribonucleic acid. Uh, these are very similar molecules. Uh, DNA is double-stranded, however, and is made up of a deoxyribose sugar. And ribonucleic acid is uh, single-stranded, and it's made up of a ribose nucleic acid. So chemically, there's a little bit of a difference in their structure. And then ultimately, that RNA can be read by a ribosome in the cytosol or on the rough endoplasmic reticulum to the ultimate production of a protein or a sequence of amino acids. So what I want to kind of demonstrate to you is how that process occurs. So I just have kind of a random piece of DNA here, uh, and it's written in this 5' prime to 3' prime uh, structure, as is typical nomenclature. And what I want to do is quickly make its complementary strand. Okay, if you remember, this would be the 5' prime end, and this is the 3' prime end. So here is our double-stranded molecule of DNA. And now what I want to do is actually convert this into RNA or use it as the code for RNA and then ultimately translate that RNA sequence into protein. So hopefully I can describe how that occurs here. So one of the first things I'm going to look for is we can use computers and all types of things to kind of find what a gene is or what is the segment of DNA. And in this particular case, what I'm really looking for is a sequence that will start the production of a protein. So I'm looking a little bit downstream here, but what looks really intriguing to me is this sequence right here called an ATG sequence. If this was converted to RNA, it would be AUG. So if we were to look at a little chart like this, which is a decoding chart for our uh, friend protein, AUG encodes for an amino acid called methionine that is also known as a start codon. So the ribosome would perceive this AUG in its RNA format as where it's going to start adding sequences or start adding amino acids together. All right, so what I'm going to do then is transcribe one of these strands. And in particular, I'm going to transcribe the 3' prime to 5' prime strand here. The reason is the enzyme can only move in one direction, if you recall. It can only read or move along from 3' prime to 5' prime because as this enzyme, which is specifically RNA polymerase, as it moves along, it's going to read a nucleotide and then place its complementary in terms of RNA above. And if you remember nucleic acids, when you make a polymer of it, the new nucleotides can only be added to the 3' prime end of the molecule. So what that will look like is as follows. So what I've just done is I've transcribed this bottom strand, also known as the template strand, right? It's the template because it's what the enzyme is reading to create what we would define here as the mRNA molecule, so messenger RNA. This is the message that's going to be sent to the ribosome that will ultimately be made into the protein uh, that is what we need, is what we desire. What that also means now is this top strand is actually identical to the mRNA that was produced, but instead of thymines, the RNA has uracils. So we don't have thymines in RNA, we just have uracils. But these two strands are identical in terms of their alphabet except for the T's and U's. So we actually would define this as the coding strand. So once again, the 3' prime to 5' prime here in this case is the template strand. It's actually what the RNA polymerase is reading. And then it's the enzyme, the RNA polymerase, is creating the mRNA molecule. And this, in terms of its sequence of letters, is identical to the 5' prime to 3' prime up here, which we would define now as the coding sequence. All right, now what I want to do with the mRNA is try to find that start codon. 
which is AUG. This is going to help me now determine the groupings of three. RNA is going to be read in groups of three because ultimately it needs to be read to create up to 20 different amino acid sequences. So the only way we can actually get 20 different types of amino acids is to read the mRNA or the RNA in groups of three. So we define this as a triplet codon. So here I'm just breaking it down into groups of three. Okay, so let's go through this. What I'm going to look for is uh, my start codon or the AUG and that's the amino acid methionine. I then will read my table over here to determine my other amino acids. So C, A, G gives me glutamic acid. G, C, U gives me alanine. U, A, C gives me tyrosine. C, G, C gives me arginine. G, C, G G, C, G gives me alanine again, and U, A, A gives me a stop codon. And that's where we'll stop. There's actually three stop codons. So once again, we're going to have a start, we have a stop, and then what we have defined here is actually the open reading frame. of this particular gene or, or code of DNA. All right. So here's our protein or our amino acid sequence. Methionine, glutamic acid, alanine, tyrosine, arginine, uh, alanine, and then eventually a stop codon. This little fragment here is a piece of RNA, but it's not actually translated into protein. So this is called a UTR, and more specifically the 5' prime UTR. That stands for untranslated region. And over here, if there was a sequence, this would be a 3' prime UTR. So as a quick overview, once again, we had our double-stranded DNA. I transcribed the template strand. So that means I made an RNA molecule that was complementary to this 3' prime to 5' prime strand. That gave me the following sequence here. Once I had my RNA, I looked for the start codon. Now, of course, in reality, there are more sequences that help dictate exactly which AUG is the start, because there may be multiple of them in a strand of DNA. Uh, but for the sake of showing you how this works, here's my AUG. This dictates my triplet codon sequence. So we got methionine, glutamic acid, alanine, tyrosine, arginine, alanine, and then we eventually reach a stop codon. And so this is our open reading frame of amino acids, and it's also uh, our gene, our, our protein product, our amino acid sequence product. And we had regions, five prime, that were untranslated, so we defined this as untranslated region. And if there were areas three prime that were untranslated, which there typically is, we would call that the three prime untranslated region. So this essentially is the whole central dogma or the idea of DNA being read to create RNA, which ultimately will be translated into protein.